Hello there. I was talking this morning um, with a friend about uh, Jesus being the creator. And we were talking about how that is not a focus in the Western church, um, hardly at all. And the beauty of realizing that and the beauty of recognizing that scripture speaks to that. We're not, nobody's making it up. It's, it's in there. And I was telling her that this is why it's so important for me to share with you all about dignity. Because one of the things that dignity says, let me give you my, my short definition of dignity is the God-given intrinsic worth and value each person carries that cannot be taken away. Um, you have always had it and you always will. And so will the person next to you. Uh, so will the person that you love very deeply. So will the person that you um, see as your enemy. They will all, they've always had it and they always will even if we don't live into it. And I think more than anything, that the reason why Jesus came is not because things were so terrible and oh, this is God's last, um, uh, last ditch effort to make sure humanity could get it together. I think Jesus came because the good news doesn't start at the incarnation. The good news starts in the garden at creation when God creates and says this is good when God creates nature and says this is good when God creates humanity and says humanity is good that's the good news because Jesus comes with that in mind Jesus shows up on the scene when things are a hot steaming mess in order to remind us and point us back to the thing that has always been and has never changed, which is that we were created very good. And we don't live into that. We chase after other things. Um, we believe that we were created for something instead of in someone. We forget that we carry the fingerprint of the creator, the eternal one. And that fingerprint is one of love and uniqueness and care and goodness and delight. And if that's where we ground ourselves, if that is the space where we find the primary thing about our identity, then the other things about us, we can, we can look at them with that same love and care in which we were created. We can be free to not be judgmental about the our what some of us call our shadow parts uh, the parts of us that um, we haven't learned to be tender with or we haven't learned to forgive or we haven't learned to um, to uh, uh, not to live beyond but um, to lay those things down and pick up the things that are more life-giving and more truer to who we are those things that we struggle with within ourselves if the primary thing about us is not what's bad or wrong, but the primary thing about us is the worth and value that we have that anchors us to the love that has created us in the first place, to the love that, that thought you up and said, man, this person is a good idea and I can't wait till they show up on the scene. If that's where we can anchor ourselves, then we can approach ourselves, our lives, our relationships, even difficult conversations and hard conversations with our enemies with a kind of understanding and a kind of grace that does not make excuses for death dealing, poor behavior, or um, things that uh, are harmful or oppressive. But it says, as you do those things, I know that you still hold humanity, that you still have dignity, even if you don't see it in yourself, even if you don't live into it, if you refuse to see it in me or in somebody else, I know because I know and understand dignity enough to know that I don't just have it, but you also have it. And it's in you no matter what you decide to do with your own humanity then we can approach one another in a way where there is space for grace and mercy and healing, even if someone else doesn't enter into it. And so as we, 
as, as I attempt to ground you and take you back to this reality and invite you to a place that says the most important thing about me, it's not how I did academically. It's not my romantic relationship status. It's not, you know, I'm a little older, so, you know, followers on social media is new to me, but, um, it's not the followers on social media. It's not where I went to school. It's not the money that I make. It's not the decisions. It's not the mistakes. It's not, it's none of these other things are primary. They're part of my story. Um, I am, you, you can be learning how to hold value of, in different ways for each one of those things that I've talked about and more things about you and who you are. Um, and even as you learn your own story, as you dig into um, the narratives and stories that have been passed down and kind of culminate in you and in your life, as you're learning about those things, um, and some of those stories are not always good. Some, some people... Uh, some of your elders, your ancestors, people who you're connected to, you're like, they did what? Um, you can remember that even in the midst of those things being a part of your story, the primary thing about who you are is that you are delighted in. The good, the goodest part of the good news is that you were created with intention, care, love, uniqueness, and that the affirmation that was spoken over us as humanity and over you as an individual is that, yes, this creation is good. 